the Ivy League colleges vote unanimously to shut down all spring sports. I gotta be honest with you guys, I completely disagree. Might catch some flack for this video, but I gotta say it. Hey guys, it's Josh, the 980 Know It All, and what the hell, Ivy League? I thought you guys were supposed to be smart. Okay, I, I get it. The coronavirus is something that has a lot of people afraid. I understand that. I live in Washington State. I'm only two and a half hours south of Seattle. I, I see the panic. But at the same time, there is stuff that the rest of the nation doesn't know that if you live in Washington State, we realize. First of all, to cancel all spring sports. Why? I mean, worst case scenario, just say no fans. Just say no fans coming to games. So that way your athletes who have trained and worked hard for years can still compete in the sports they love and the sports they've worked hard to be at. I mean, there are, there are guys and girls, men's and women's athletes who are seniors this year and they may never get to play their sport again because you shut down all spring sports. Not postpone them, not move them, not eliminate the fans from being there. You just shut them down. To me, that is one, living in fear of something that really isn't as dangerous to like your athletes um, as some people will maybe tell you that it is. And two, it's, it seems like it's just a cost cutting thing. They wanted to cut costs and hey, this is a perfect way of doing it for a spring we can get rid of sports. I, and I know guys, I already said, I'm probably gonna catch some flack for, for doing this video, but I gotta say it. A couple months ago when I kind of rebooted Not Any Know It All, I said that this was gonna be a channel and, and a site in which I am honest with everybody, with my feelings, my thoughts, my opinions, and it's this is one of those days where I gotta be completely honest. Like I said, I live in Washington State. I live here and I see everything around. And I'm gonna tell you something that people don't realize across the country. In my county and other counties like it, they're not testing people for the virus. They're not, unless, unless you went overseas or have direct contact, contact with someone who's already been a 100% confirmed case of the coronavirus, they won't test you. If you have a cough, you're not feeling good, they're not testing you. So I will be honest, there's a lot of people here in Cowles County and the other areas who are pretty sure they have it or already had the coronavirus and were fine. Now they could be wrong, maybe they didn't have it, but there's a lot of people who are pretty sure it's already spread. In fact, I, I overheard one doctor talking who's pretty sure that there's probably thousands of cases of the coronavirus that have already gone out, people who didn't get ill enough to even go to a doctor, didn't go to a hospital. So that changes the death rate percentages drastically to really being the same as the flu. And that's something that people aren't talking about, people aren't, aren't being honest with. Yes, the coronavirus does affect people who have compromised immune systems, people who are vulnerable to diseases like that. That's a real thing. There are people who, uh, my grandma is in a retirement home and they've locked down, not letting people in or out necessarily, except for like workers, because those individuals in that retirement home are vulnerable to a disease like this. So I get that, 100% agree with that. But th the common person, the average person, this isn't going to affect them. This isn't going to be a danger to them. It's gonna be a flu-like thing. It's gonna be a cold-like thing. And that isn't worth panicking and shutting down the entire country for. It's, it's not. And I know once again, I'm not a doctor, but for the last few weeks, man, my wife and I have been doing a lot of research because we're actually planning to go to Disneyland uh, in not too long a time. And we were really worried about this. Were we going to be putting ourselves and our daughters at risk? And the more research we did, the more we listened to doctors from across the country and listened to the truth, we realized, no, nah, we're going, we're going to have fun. We're going to go down there and have, and hopefully maybe have shorter lines, but shutting down sports across the nation is just mind boggling to me. 
And the Ivy League, I don't get it. I do not get it. The athletes on those teams, they don't have compromised immune systems. And if they do, they know to take care of themselves and to avoid things. Maybe they don't play this year, but all the rest of them, they might get a cough. That's it. They're not going to be in danger because this virus isn't going to be able to attack them because they're healthy. They're, they're physically healthy individuals. So all this panic just drives me nuts. Now, once again, if, if an institution decides, hey, you know what? We're going to play the games, but we're just not going to have fans in there. I don't necessarily like that because I'm a fan. I go to games. But I, I'm okay with that. At least the athletes still get to play. Uh, Lower Columbia, who I cover all the time, they went to Edmonds Community College last night, played a game with no fans. They still got to play. The game was still a great game, went into the 11th inning. A lot of fun. Those athletes who have been working hard still got to play the game and the sport that they've been working at and care about. And so, yeah, it stinks that no fans could be there. But at the same time, Edmonds at least had a camera playing the game live. Now, it wasn't the best view. It only could see uh, inside of first base, inside of third. You couldn't see the bases on the corners. But you could at least see the pitches. You could see the action. You you understood what was going on. And I, at least that was something. I was okay with that. In fact, I was on my couch sorting photos and watching the game. I wasn't going to drive there. It's like three hours to get there. So wasn't going to go, but I could still sit and watch. And so it was worth it for me. I, I thought it was great. And I have no problem with... with organizations doing that if you know if a college says hey just to protect ourselves protect our players we're going to play but we're going to say no fans I'm, I'm good with that I'm good with that it sucks it really does suck um, because as fans we know the risk we know to put ourselves out there but you know what they've been saying the best way to stop the coronavirus from spreading is wash your hands just wash your hands my family we've been washing our hands all day long we do uh, the hand sprays as well, just to make sure, you know, we've been taking care of ourselves. Actually, we've been pretty healthy the last week. We haven't gotten, no one's really coughing. No one's really sneezing. So that's a bonus as well. But I don't get it, Ivy League. I don't get it. I don't get this. And it, it also drives me nuts, you know, the, the talk with Major League Baseball. And yes, you know, in Seattle, they're saying maybe they'll move their game somewhere else. Maybe they'll uh, not have fans. And once again, that sucks. Well, not necessarily. No one goes to the Mariner games much anyways. But at the same time, at least they're still playing. At least they're still moving forward. Now, I know for the players, that kind of sucks as well. I mean, going to a game in which you're used to playing in front of thousands of fans cheering you, booing you, whatever, and all of a sudden being in a stadium where there's no noise, there's nothing going on, that, that's got to be a little discouraging, a little disheartening. Um, but at the same time, at least they're playing. At least they're moving forward and getting games on. You know, the weird thing for me is for the Ivy League, they're they're based on the East Coast, Northeast. They're not even in the Northwest where there's Washington's hitting stuff. But once again, guys, the truth is the cases that are being reported are a fraction of what's really out there. I mean, there's, a, there's so many more. And those people aren't sick enough to go to the doctor, aren't sick enough to go to the hospital, aren't even being tested. I think my wife did some research and the state of Washington can test a thousand people a day, which they're not. They're not doing that any, anywhere close. But like Texas only does 40 people a day, can only do 40 people a day. Uh, Oregon had a, a really low number. So these states aren't even testing people that much. They're just testing the individuals who are most at risk because they want to help them. You know, that's the best chance for those people. If they know what they have, then they can work with it, fight it, you know, try and help them get better. But, you know, if someone like me gets it and I go down and tell my doctor that I'm coughing, I'm sick, and I think I have the virus, he's going to say, well, did you go overseas? And I'll say no. He goes, have you been in contact with someone that you know for sure hasn't been tested positive? And I'll say no. He goes, okay, I'm not going to test you then. I mean, that's, that's how it is. That's how things are going. So this fear is, is driving me nuts. It really is. And, you know, it's okay to take precaution. It's okay to do that. But to just cancel everything. I don't, I don't know how else to say it, but Ivy League, you sound stupid. You look stupid now. You look like you're a worried, fear, panicked group of people 
who doesn't understand that just washing your hands can help prevent the spread of the virus. Have your games, say no fans, but let the athletes play. I mean, this is taking away a year of their, of their life that they can't participate in the sport that they've dedicated themselves for years. And yes, I know the Ivy League is more focused on the academics because they're smart colleges and that's great, but you're really ripping away something, a part of them. Sports are a part of who they are as a student athlete. Yes, they are a student first, but they are also athletes. When you take away a sport from someone, and I know this probably better than anyone else, when I stopped doing sports, even in high school, I took a, a one, one year, my sophomore year, I decided not to really play anything. I didn't do anything in the fall. I didn't play basketball in the, in the, in the winter. And my grades just plummeted because I didn't know what to do as a student athlete. I, I wasn't used to being just a student. I was used to trying to do both and having to focus my time and work on things. And when I took that, that away from myself, I hurt myself. My junior year, when I went full bore and did sports, you know, all throughout the year, I did uh, golf, did basketball, and did tennis, my, my grades jumped right back up. I went from being, you know, freshman year 3.8, sophomore year to a 2.8, and junior year back up to like a 3.6, 3.7. Sports do make a difference in the lives of athletes and, and students. So to take it away, you might as well just shut down your school. You might as well just shut down your school and tell everybody, hey, no more school, no more classes, go away. In fact, I mean, what was it? The Dayton University or University of Dayton? I don't remember which one it is. They shut down all their classes and said only online learning for the next like 20 days or so. So the students... You know, in fear of getting sick and, and getting the virus and all this stuff, went out and had a huge, huge block party, rave type thing that the, I think it was like the riot police had to be called in to break it up. The students weren't afraid of being, you know, catching the virus. And yes, students aren't always the smartest things, smartest people in the world, but they didn't have fear. They weren't living their life in fear. And I don't know. Like I said, guys, I know that some of you guys out there are going to watch this video and be like, well, you're stupid. You shouldn't say this type of stuff. People are dying. Yes, they are dying. And I'm, it's horrible. And it's sad. But statistically, when you really figure it out, it's about equal to the flu. It's just that we're panicking as a nation just to panic is what it feels like. It feels like we're panicking just to panic. And it's affecting sports now. It's affecting baseball. It's affecting softball. It's affecting everything in the spring. It's affecting the lives of student athletes, their families, their friends, and it's got to be called out. Come on, guys. We've got to be better than this. Take care of ourselves. Wash your hands. I'm telling you, wash your hands, okay? Don't cough on people. Make sure that you're trying to be as healthy as possible. Eat good. Do that type of stuff, and you'll be okay. You know, I can't guarantee that, but... If you're healthy and you're an adult, even even if you're a kid, if you're healthy and you're doing things the right way, you can avoid getting sick. So guys, if you agree with me, great. If you don't agree with me, great. But I've got to say, that's my thoughts on this. It's a shame that the, that the Ivy League canceled their entire season for all their sports in the spring. I feel bad for those athletes. I feel, I mean, I truly, I feel bad for them. The, if you're, if you're a senior and you're losing out on your senior year, I would be so mad. So mad. I wouldn't even describe it. But it is what it is. So, guys, I'm Josh, the Not Eating Know-It-All. Thanks for listening to me rant. And if you disagree with me, don't be too harsh in the comments. If you agree with me, don't be too harsh in the comments to other people as well. Just it is what it is. Talk to you guys later.